Hello, dear ladies and gentlemen, and there seems to have been a bit of a bank raid on one's bank account. We are uh, a little bit light on credits. We'd had over 20 million a few minutes ago, and uh, we took a trip into Hegarty's, and there was a Porsche sitting there. This Porsche cost 18 million credits, and we bought it, but this isn't the car we're in. This is in a return to the historic cars. This is the Ferrari P330. Ultimately, we've elected to do a little bit of historic racing at Sardinia. We're going to try and crunch some credits with the older cars, see how they stack up, see how they stack up against the GR3 cars of today. Absolutely stunning looking little car. Let's take a look at the settings. It's coming in at 766.18 pp with 627 brake horsepower. It's on softs. It's running fully customizable suspension and fully customizable diff, all absolutely standard. We've taken it for a quick spin around the track, and there's actually nothing wrong with the original setup. Downforce is set to 100 and 150 on the rear. Fully customizable ECU, no, nothing restricted. 330 on the uh, diff. Medium RPM turbo. Everything else is default. Brake control is in. We've got the stroke up, the titanium connecting rods and pistons, the racing crankshaft, and the increased body rigidity. Everything else is standard. We've got racing intercooler. I might have missed that. But we haven't made any adjustments to the downforce than what comes with the car. Nothing changed. Everything is default. Let's take it to the track. Here we are at the circuit. We're going to take a look at the settings. Assist, traction control 1, default ABS, ASM and counter steer assistance on strong. Controller settings, controller sensitivity at 5, force feedback max torque 5, force feedback sensitivity 6. I think we should just get straight into it. I've lost so many credits on below 4 million. Let's go out there and win some races. So, fuel map down to 6. We're actually going to have a crack at a one stop. See what she does. So we've gone up one place, we're in 19th. We need to try and get this to eight laps. And rely, only got five gears. So we just got to rely on this to just get us up through the traffic. Keep with them and then allow them to pit. And as they pit, we just go sailing on past. That's what we're trying to do. We could probably two stop it. We'd have to go much faster. But what we're trying to do is just get this car to get us through the course. The ABS is flashing on and off. That's because we're turning, I believe. Eight laps out the first in, seven laps out the second. And it cuts through the grassy knoll beautifully. It's ever so warm in here tonight. My glasses are actually steaming up. Eight, 19 seconds behind the leader, Mr. Fortilla. I don't know what will actually happen if we were to use this car in the final race. I don't know whether it would do a one-stop or whether the AI would choose to do something different. A little bit of a wiggle under braking. Fuel's looking on the money as we're in 17th spot. Just get a little bit of a chat on now as the as we can burn a little bit of fuel. Takes a little bit longer in the brakes this car. My assumption is the the tyres are slightly different on the older on the older cars. They're not the same racing slicks as you get on 
racing car of today. The old technology is still in the tyres, one would suggest. Because these will be treaded, they won't be a full racing slick back in the day, one wouldn't have thought. Overtaking four people through the grassy knoll. A little bit of a bump on Mr. Hizal there. Which is no surprise. Up into eighth place. 6.2 on the fuel gauge. Dip the tyres in the grass. We get to 6.0, which is absolutely bang on where we need to be. Tyres are looking good. Up with Mr. Mendoza. In the Aston. No Jaguars in this race, is there? if the old historic Aston is any good round here. The James Bond car it would have to be, wouldn't it? It's such a slidey thing at uh, Goodwood. I don't think we'd want to bring it here, to be honest. Point four on the fuel, just a little tickle behind we are. Let's see if we can just get that back by the start line. Quite happy to sit in the draft of these two. We might just slide past them at the grassy knoll. Mr. Grady left his room and we lent on him. into fifth place as we enter lap four or about to enter lap four Mr Ordnus in front of us Portilla will be thinking about his pit stop at the end of the next lap we'll be doing five more including this one Now this engine has its own particular crispy rasp, doesn't it? Just listening to it behind my head, you can hear it from behind. Absolutely thunderous sound. Breaking just on the 200 and getting a real wiggle in the brake zone. Tyres are really good. We're in fourth place. Fuel is good. No dramas. Mr. Fraga has the fastest lap of the race. We're cool with that. We're a 141.531. Fraga's a 140.489, so a whole second ahead. Mr. Portilla's now gone in. Fraga will assume the start, the head of the race. So we are 11 seconds behind him at this point as we go to the grass, but fuel is absolutely spot on for the four laps. Portilla's about to exit the pits. We relied on a bit of engine braking then, which will have consumed a little bit of fuel, but Hey ho, we'll just take this car nice and methodical. A real controlled race. Game of percentages, really. We know if we're with them, they're going to effectively have one stop. Well, Boubois is one stopping along with us, so we've got to measure ourselves against Boubois. We're 10 seconds behind him right now.
I don't think a one stopper has got the chance to win this race on the AI side of things. Fuel is on the money. And then we know in the second half of the race we don't have to fuel conserve at all. We've got a whole spare lap of fuel. We've just got to get this to the pit stop this time round. Fraga's gone in. That releases Bouvoir to another lap. Ordinez is some 10 seconds behind us. Oh, bouvoir has gone in as well. So we're the leading one-stop car and we put in the fastest lap of the race. So we've got one stop to make. We're ahead of Ordinez who is now the leading one stop car. There's a little bit of room there for fastest lap. I'm expecting fastest lap to be in the in the 138 kind of region we won't be setting that lap time I don't think we'll have to check it out see how well the car goes when it's lighter fuel just continuing to try and manage that fuel just a little bit yeah just three tenths down so Portilla comes to the head of the field now some 14 seconds behind us we've just been a bit cagey with fuel I think we need to be 2.1, 2.0, when it drops to 1.9, we'll be in the pits, we're good, we're currently okay. We're going to coast this from the 200 though, break on the 150. Push on through. seconds ahead of Mr. Portilla which he will be also pitting at the same time as us at the end of lap 8 then he'll have one more stop to make so it looks like we've got this all in hand it's very capable classic racer which admittedly is a class above but it's a time gone by, that's the difference. Twelve point six seconds ahead of Bortilla. Mr. Bishop in the Ferrari having a good day in third place. We will still make it to the pits, I feel. 1-0. Yes, we're still going to get there. Fastest lap of the race, a 1.40.192. Nobody else pushing. Thirty-nine-five eight one by Mr. Portilla. We expected nothing less. He's a hard racer. He won't want to be beaten. We're pitting in this lap, so just need to be cautiously aware of where we go in. Bishop's pitted now in the other Ferrari. Wilk in the Ford has also pitted.
we're good on fuel. Right on the money. Portilla's just got us down to 12 seconds and below. Just keeping an eye on that fuel. Thirteen seconds ahead. We haven't met any traffickers yet for lapping, which I don't expect us to. There's probably one just ahead there. There he is as we dive into the pits. We'll take the softs. We did need them. The rears were looking halfway done. The fronts were nowhere near being needed. But that's us done. Eight laps. You can see those old branded Firestone tyres. You can see they've got a tread on. Portilla's come into the pits. He's on 8% of fuel. He's going to be stopping once again. Mr. Fraga goes past, the potential leader of the race. The potential winner. He's got to put in a couple of decent laps. Bouvoir's coming through as well. Now we're chasing all the way to the finish. Seven laps, no stop. And we can hammer this because we've got the fuel. We know we have. No need to. Uh, no need to check up on anything. Fraga is only 4.3 seconds ahead. There he is. Just got to get the front tyres to grip as we enter the corners. And we can absolutely leather this in. Braking on the 150, I think, is where we're going to go. Force the engine to do the work. It'll consume some fuel, but we'll be fine. Taking a second and a half out of him. Let's see where we can get on lap times. Expect to be 142 or less on this first out lap breaking on the 150 we know he's got another pit stop to do we know that so we don't really have to chase him down be nice to though wouldn't it can't get the racer out Seven seconds behind, but 17 seconds ahead of Portilla. We expect Fraga to go in this pit. End of this lap. See if we can get the toe off him going up the start, finish straight. He's got the acceleration on us, I'm afraid. There's the fastest lap of the race, it's ours. We've got half a lap of fuel in hand. A 
and I believe I've just seen ahead of me the potential first of the lap cars. And I don't know whether we've actually lapped anybody. We're on lap 11 at the moment, so... We should be pretty close to picking somebody up on lap 10, normally. So whoever's at the top of the hill here, whoever we're chasing down, could be Solace, don't know. We're not going to be far away from, we have five laps of fuel left. We've got excess of half a lap of fuel in the tank, which is really good. Which goes to show just how much we can serve in the first lap out. In the first stint. We could probably push this a little bit harder, but I'm trying to drive within myself. No incidents, no accidents. It is Solace. In the Alpha. Out of the pits comes Mr. Innerstroza in the Porsche. So that's two cars which we've lapped pretty much early on in lap 12. We're 20 seconds clear. We're expecting Portilla to hit this lap so that'll increase the gap back to Fraga Fraga should be on his way entirely to to the end of the race now he should be on it because he pitted on lap 10 on his two stopper Bishop's made his way back up there into fourth place look Mr. Ordnez and Mr. Yamanaka pitting on their unusual three-stop, two-stop, whichever it is they're going to be doing. There's some potential lap cars ahead. I don't know who that is. Could be the back of the Ford, Mr. Wilk. It could be Mr. Gallo. Yes, it could. A 39.043, fastest lap of the race. Doesn't want to dip into the 38s, does it? Three laps remaining. Get past Mr. Gallo, showing him a clean pair of heels. We've still got roughly half a tank of fuel in hand at this point. We don't have to back off or slow down for anybody. 37 seconds in the lead. Two tenths up on the purple. Oh, we almost get pounded there. Oh, that was close. I saw him coming in the rear view then. That was a shocker. 36 seconds ahead of Mr. Fraga. That was almost three quarters of a second down. Point two, point three of a lap to spare a fuel. Can 
coming up to the back of Mr. Hizal. It was his teammate that almost piled driving us. Was that Yamanaka? It was. Two thirds of a second ahead of the pink at that point. Loads of fuel left in the tank. As the car likes to now make its legs with the lesser fuel weight. Goes faster and also stops quicker. Probably didn't need to check down to first gear there. Still half a second up. Lost the front end as we go towards the wall. Or as we get spun out by Mr. Robilar. There's a revenge move, if ever I saw one. We held that quite well. Going to give you some back, Mr. Rubilar. Focus on the race, Widow. Don't take it out on the AI. Final lap of the race, 1.3 laps of fuel remaining. See if we can catch those four cars there. There's a whole queue of them. We probably won't get there, but we'll see. Should have the power to catch. And try and get a couple down the start finish straight if we've got the legs. Second gear for this corner in this car. A very safe car to drive. Absolutely has total control of the race. Very balanced, very well poised, just driver issues making the errors. A better driver will do better things with this car. Up to 14th place we are. There's a possibility here to take in 12th and 13th, but we'll have to see. No, we're just going to finish in 14th. And there you have it. The old style open top race car, number 21, the Ferrari P330. What do you think, folks? For me, my impression, wins the race, hands down, well in control. Fastest lap of the race, not the fastest there is, but let's see where it goes. A 25.42, so not as fast as the rough. But then again, when you look at some others that are around the 26 minutes, it's a perfectly capable racer, a really good grinder. It will get there. So we lapped up to, as we confirm, lapped up to 13th place. Mr. Rubelar we put behind us. And then a fastest lap of 138.835 on the final lap. Delivers the cash to the bank account. Takes us somewhere towards 5 million, having been somewhere plus of north of 20 million but that's what we buy these cars for and there we have it starts out on the right hand side all on its own and accelerates up through the field it's up to you what you do folks what do you think we'll see you on the next one all the best take care